Narrative recapped here. Today I'm going to show you a psychological thriller film called Gone Girl. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Nick and Amy Dunn were the happiest couple they knew until they weren't. In the middle of their rocky marriage, the rich and beautiful Amy goes missing and all the evidence points to her seemingly unbothered husband, Nick. With his wife lying against him, Nick slowly strokes her hair. He thinks about cracking her skull, unspooling her brains to get answers. On the day of his fifth anniversary, Nick visits the bar, which he co-owns with his twin sister Margo. He asks for a glass of bourbon then with a sour mood, tells her what day it is. Margo was never a big fan of Amy so like Nick, she isn't enthusiastic about the anniversary, either. Sometime in the past, Amy was writing about how happy she was on her diary. She met the witty and charming Nick at a party in New York. Nick tried to convince her that he's not just fooling around with her. Amy doesn't believe him, saying that his chin makes him look villainous. In response, Nick covers his chin before promising that he really is serious with her. While they're walking past a bakery, the two of them get covered in sugar and Nick tells her that she can't go through a sugar storm unkissed. He wipes some of the sugar off her lips, then kissed her softly. Back to the present, Margo asks Nick if Amy will do another one of their anniversary treasure hunts. Since the riddles tend to be about her, she gets mad at Nick when he doesn't know the answer. He then receives a call from his neighbor, informing him that his cat is outside their house. This prompts him to go home to bring the cat back in. Once he's home, Nick calls for Amy only to receive no response. While looking for her, he finds their living room table flipped over with the glass completely shattered. When Detective Rhonda Boney and Officer James Gilpin arrive, they start their investigation immediately. Though everything looks normal at first, Rhonda sees a small splatter of blood in the kitchen. She marks it and James gives Nick a suspicious look. They then go to Amy's office next and through the poster there, Rhonda discovers that Amy Elliott Dunn is the main character of the popular children's book, Amazing Amy. In Amy's next diary entry, she wrote about getting married. She and Nick were at her parents' party to celebrate the next installment of the book where Amazing Amy was going to get married. Bitter and jealous, Amy comments about how the book's material was just an improved version of her own inadequacies. As she explains during an interview with a group of reporters, Amazing Amy was always one step ahead of her. To her delight, Nick joined in on the interview to propose. In present day, Nick's brought to the police station for questioning. Despite the increasing crime and drug problems in the city, he appears laid back about his wife's disappearance, even cracking a joke or two. The more Nick gets questioned, the clearer it becomes that he doesn't pay attention to his wife. He doesn't know what she does all day, if she has any friends, or what her blood type is. Rhonda's frustration peaks when she finds out that Nick hasn't even called Amy's parents yet and she makes him invite them to the press conference tomorrow. In another diary entry, Nick and Amy were two years into their marriage. They were happy, Marriage didn't feel like work like others said it would. Nick knew her inside out. He could answer her treasure hunt riddle with ease, and he even got her the same present she got him as an anniversary gift. Continuing with the investigation, Rhonda had sent the forensic team over to inspect the Dunn household, leaving Nick to stay the night at Margot's place. A pregnant Noel Hawthorne approaches Rhonda and she claims to be Amy's best friend. Rhonda's surprised by this and she agrees to meet her later before heading inside the house. They find their first clue in Amy's underwear drawer in the form of a note, literally labeled as Clue 1. During the conference, Nick delivers his plea for the people's help in a stiff and uncaring manner. While the reporters swarm Amy's parents Rand and Mary Beth with questions, Nick is told to stand next to Amy's missing poster and smile. He passively obliges. After the press conference, Rhonda asks Nick about the clue she found in Amy's belongings. Nick knows the answer to the riddle and he takes her to his office in the school he's teaching in. There, Nick finds the second clue while Rhonda spots a pair of red-hot underwear. Nick looks rather troubled and he directs Rhonda's attention back to the clue. The second one mentions a little brown house, which Nick claims he doesn't know. Later that evening, Nick goes to his father's old house. Nobody lives there anymore since his father now spends his days in a nursing home. He finds the third clue there and hides it from Rhonda who he suspects is following him. Once inside his car, Nick reads the third clue and in his frustration, he curses his wife before hitting the steering wheel. For Amy's next diary entry, she described the recession that left the two of them jobless. While Amy was supportive of Nick, he got upset when he discovered that Amy let her parents take most of her trust fund without telling him. While he ended up assuring her that it was fine, he later used that incident to justify his excessive spending. In the middle of a brewing argument with her, he received a call from Margot about their ailing mother and from then on, Amy knew that things would only get worse. Nick and Amy moved together to Missouri but she wondered if he even wanted her with him. She felt alienated in their new home, uninvolved. 
Two days after Amy's disappearance, Nick goes to the volunteer center for her. Mary Beth and even Officer James are turned off by how friendly Nick is to the people there. To him, he was just being the polite gentleman that his mother wanted him to be but to them, he was behaving as if nothing was wrong. When Rhonda asks him about Noelle Hawthorne, Nick says he doesn't know who she is. He then spots Desi Collings, Amy's ex-boyfriend, and tries to follow him only to get stopped by a woman. She takes a photo with him and Nick puts on a fake smile before asking her to delete it. She refuses to listen and, in her annoyance, walks away from him. Things start looking bad for Nick. Rhonda's team can't find the expensive purchases Nick supposedly made in their house, and the media is attacking Nick for his smiling photos. While he's starting to unwind in Margot's couch, he receives an unexpected visit from his student, Andy. The two of them have been having an affair and Andy even mentions that Nick promised to get a divorce with Amy. He tells her to never speak about it again and with that, they sleep together. Nick and Amy's marriage was falling apart and she made that very clear in her diary. He only ever used Amy for release but beyond that, she didn't exist to him. When she suggested that it may be time for them to have a baby, Nick got angry. Their argument kept escalating until it turned violent. Nick cursed Amy out and pushed her hard, making her fall down and hit her head against the stairs post. As the investigation for the gone girl continues, Rhonda and James meet up with a dealer named Jason who recognizes Amy's photo. Apparently, she showed up there on Valentine's Day, desperately needing a small gun that she could keep close. He wasn't lying, either, Amy has a Valentine's Day entry on her diary where she wrote about needing a gun. She believed that Nick truly wanted to get rid of her and that the only thing stopping him was her money. The next morning comes and when Andy takes her leave, Margot lashes out on Nick. He tries to defend his choices by bringing up how terrible Amy made him feel but Margot doesn't want to hear it. Instead, she shows Nick how much the TV host Ellen Abbott is already tearing him apart for his abnormal and supposedly sociopathic behavior amidst his wife's disappearance. A vigil is held for Amy later that night. Nick gives a more convincing speech this time around, professing his love for his beautiful wife, which upsets Andy. Noel interrupts his speech and demands Nick to tell everyone what he did to his pregnant wife. Amy's pregnancy comes as a surprise to everyone and Nick is forced to leave the vigil. Back in his home, the first thing Rhonda does is ask Nick if he knew his wife was pregnant. When Nick denied the very notion, Rhonda proceeds to show him how tight the noose around his neck is. Their kitchen passed the luminol test with flying colors, indicating that Amy lost a lot of blood there and someone tried to clean it up. She shows him a record of his finances that states he's over $100,000 in credit card debt. Nick claims he never bought any of those. Then comes Amy's life insurance and Nick says he bumped it up because she told him to. Finally, Rhonda receives a call, confirming that Amy is six weeks pregnant. Nick wails, and refuses to talk to her again without a lawyer. When Margot confronts Nick, he tells her that he wanted kids but Amy didn't. Amy discarded the result of his fertility test so he kept it in a box along with all the other things that he resents her for. Finally, Nick tells Margot that maybe he does hate Amy. After Margot walked out on him Nick spends his time trying to crack the third clue. Meanwhile, Rhonda and James are back in the house of Nick's father as she tries to figure out what Nick was doing there that night. Finally, Nick deciphers the clue and he heads straight for Margot's woodshed, where all of his alleged purchases are stored. Rhonda, on the other hand, discovers Amy's lightly burned diary stashed inside the furnace. And on the very last page of the diary, Amy had written that the man of her dreams, the father of her child may truly kill her. On the day she went missing, Amy left town with her new car, thinking about how much happier she was now that she's dead. Before disappearing, she read books, watched documentaries. Amy befriended Noelle and fed her fabricated stories of a volatile and temperamental Nick. Then, she took a sample of Noelle's urine so she can add pregnancy to her medical records. The credit card debt, the maxed out life insurance, the profuse bleeding on the kitchen floor, the half-baked cleaning that came after it, and the half-true entries to the diary, they were all Amy's doing. It was her vengeance for the way Nick reduced her into nothing, for getting lazy and becoming someone she didn't agree to marry, and for cheating on her. Now, all that's left for Amy is to drown herself in a river for everyone to find, and convict Nick with her murder. As for Nick, he seeks legal counsel from Tanner Bolt. He's a very expensive lawyer who once defended Nick from Ellen Abbott and in turn, Ellen called him the patron saint of wife killers. He he agrees to help Nick out, and advises him to get other people on their side to change the public's roast-inted perception of Amy. Nick arranges a meeting with Tommy O'Hara, Amy's ex-boyfriend. Tommy says that Amy accused him of forcing himself on her. He gave her some space until one night, Amy showed up to roughly but consensually sleep with him. Then the next day, cops showed up at Tommy's door, Amy had wounds consistent with her claims and Tommy was forced to plead down. 
while he didn't serve jail time, he's been unemployed since then and he's had to register himself as a predator. Through Tommy's anecdote, Nick sees what could happen to him if he lets Amy win and with her track record, she's sure to get away with it if he doesn't do something. After speaking with Tommy, Nick heads over to Amy's other ex, Desi. She told him that she had to file a restraining order against him and Nick tries to get Desi's side of the story. Even after all this time, he's still faithful to Amy. Desi gives Nick nothing, and leaves without another word. While in hiding, Amy gave herself a bruise with a hammer so she can play the part of a battered spouse in hiding. She stays in a small resort and there, she befriends Greta and Jeff. Amy revels in Ellen Abbott slandering Nick on cable television, and she revels in the fact that Missouri has the death penalty. In her joy, she makes an anonymous call to the police about suspicious activity near Margot's woodshed. When Tanner arrives in Missouri, Nick gives him a rundown of everything that happened. After much consideration, Tanner convinces Nick to go on live television and come forward with his infidelity. He says that people can sympathize with a jerk who admits he's wrong and at the moment, nothing's more important than getting the public on Nick's side. Nick however has a different idea, what if he only needs to reach one person? As for Amy, she ends up getting robbed by Greta and Jeff. Without any money left, Amy is forced to meet with Desi. Though it's already been years since the two of them have been together, Desi remains unyieldingly loyal to her. As the two begin to leave, the news starts playing. Andy is in a press conference with Amy's parents and she admits to her affair with Nick. Mary Beth publicly disowns him as her son-in-law before announcing that she and her husband definitely believe that he has a part in Amy's disappearance. Since Andy had beat them to it, Nick's team is in a pinch. Tanner tries to call the whole thing off but Nick promises he has this under control. At his insistence, they proceed with the interview. The night Nick's interview airs, Amy is in Desi's lake house and she watches the television like a hawk. Nick admits that before he met Amy, he was just a mediocre guy who pretended to be someone better, someone that she would like, and these are the words that Amy wants to hear. Her eyes widen as Nick says he's taken himself to the woodshed for the way he's treated her. He begs her to come home and if she does, he promises to be the man he promised her he would be. Nick covers his chin when he tells her that he loves her, just like he did in the beginning. Just as they anticipated, Nick's interview completely transformed the public's opinion of him. They went from hating him to loving him. But before they could celebrate, sirens blare from the distance and Rhonda shows up with a warrant to search Margot's shed. While Rhonda has repeatedly given Nick the benefit of the doubt, seeing all the items in the woodshed was the last straw for her. The police take Margot in but Tanner assures Nick that they're only doing that to mess with him. Since there's no body and murder weapon, Tanner remains confident in their case. The tide quickly changes however when Rhonda brings Nick in for questioning. With Amy's diary and a murder weapon found in his fireplace, Nick is charged for the murder of his wife. His imprisonment doesn't last long though. Thanks to Tanner, Nick's out on bond and he can stay at home to prepare for the trial. At this point, Nick is unfazed by the mobs coming after him. He maintains a steely look on his face and dares Amy to come home. Meanwhile, Amy has successfully planted the seeds of her escape. She's starting to look more like the old her and Desi is hopelessly enamored. The morning before he goes to work, she kisses him hard until his lips bleed before tousling his shirt. As Desi leaves with his disheveled look caught in the security cameras, Amy goes on to soak the end of her nightgown in red wine. Without missing a beat, she crawls over to the door and begins wailing, looking as if she's been roughly assaulted while everything's being recorded. That evening, Amy puts on a seductive and needy act while she welcomes Desi home, and rushes him to sleep with her. She tells him to go hard and while he's lost in pure bliss, she slashes Desi across his throat with a box cutter. She lets his blood pour all over her then wrestles him with ease, mounting him and restraining him until he's dead. On the 30th day of his wife's disappearance, Nick wakes to the sound of a car pulling over in front of his house. He goes to check it out and there she is, amazing Amy in all her bloody glory. Nick could only look at her in disbelief but once she's close enough, he curses her before she dramatically falls to his arms with the media surrounding them. Amy is admitted to a hospital to get checked for her condition. Now that Rhonda knows Nick didn't kill his wife, her suspicion has fully shifted to Amy. Neither she nor Nick believes a lick of her story. Amy claims that Desi kidnapped her and kept her in his lake house, using her endlessly until she escaped. Rhonda tries to point out the inconsistencies in the entire narrative but everyone dismisses her, preferring to focus on Amy's story and then Amy's story alone. Once they're back home, Amy makes Nick shower with her to make sure that he isn't wired. She demands to have the same Nick who begged her to save his life on national television and when Nick promises to leave, she reminds him that everyone will destroy him if he does. In the end, she tells Nick to sleep on his decision and upon hearing those words, the hope and energy drains from Nick's face. 
He obliges. Amy reigns victorious as America's sweetheart once again. She has the media eating out of the palm of her hands and Nick, Margot, and Rhonda couldn't be any more displeased. Since he's not at risk anymore, Tanner leaves and Nick tries to convince Rhonda to pursue the case. As much as Rhonda wants to, it's no longer in her hands. Seven weeks into Amy's return, Nick is forced to welcome Ellen Abbott into his home. Despite all the dirt she smeared on his name, she remains flippant about it, justifying that she simply goes where the story goes without apologizing once. Ever the gentleman, Nick maintains his composure and he simply goes to find Amy upstairs. This is when Amy drops the next bombshell on him. She's pregnant with his child. She used Nick's sperm sample from the fertility clinic and now, she's trapping him with her pregnancy. She promises that if he leaves now, their child will grow to hate Nick out of his own accord. Nick has already reached his limit. He grabs Amy by her face then slams her against the wall. Amy is unfazed, coldly telling him that he only liked himself when he was trying to be someone she could like. She warns him that he will never be happy with any other girl but her. Perturbed, Nick admits that while he did love her, all they ever did was resent each other, try to control each other, and cause each other pain. Amy's response is simple. She tells him, that's marriage. Nick is left speechless. The two of them head down the stairs to attend the interview with Ellen. Nick maintains his smile, even when he reveals that the two of them are going to be parents. But the smile quickly fades when Ellen goes to hug and congratulate his wife. When Nick tells Margot that he's going to stay with Amy for his child, she is completely heartbroken. He tries to reason that he's doing this for his baby but Margot accuses him of wanting to stay with Amy. She is devastated and Nick is devoid of any hope. With Amy lying against him, and he's left to wonder, what is she thinking? What have they done to each other? What will they do? Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like as it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.